Je attends. I, I don't even know if that's French. I just hmm. heard, you know, in Bill and Ted. Ziggy, piggy, ziggy, piggy. Hey, I just, I, look, I'm, I'm trying to make use of all the costumes we have. Might downstairs. as well. Might as well. Might as well. So the little general, Jolie Polion, Jolion. Guys, what's up? <laughs> yeah, he was tiny. He was only like five, seven, five, eight. We are back Average. from <laughs> Savage. Napoleon. Yeah, no, well, the Napoleon means that he's taller than Joe, right? Yeah, Don't worry, like Joe. You can be the most influential <laughs> man in the world. Can I wear the hat with the? I guess I can. So, uh, guys, we just got back from a holiday, and in which this came out. Uh, could not convince my family to go to Napoleon. They were not as quite as interested as I was in the little general. Uh, instead, we stayed home and we watched uh, Netflix. Uh, the Killer. Well, it was pretty That's good. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Uh, but uh, I really wanted to see Napoleon. So we're back uh, Monday. <clears throat> and so I went out and see. Maybe too late for review. I don't care. We're going to review it. Uh, I was looking forward to this one. You know, I saw the, the trailer and I saw this big epic. And I was looking forward to it. Because, uh, you know, I, uh, obviously I like historical uh, tabletop gaming, and Napoleon comes up a lot in that. Ridley Scott, pretty good. Yeah, Ridley Scott lo does a lot, of, uh, a lot of epic films, including Gladiator. Um, what's that duel, the duel one, the duel, the duel. Uh, that came out that was basically a box office disaster? But I thought it, it was good. Bad, right? I thought it. it was good. So I was hoping for, you know, some... Um, Another sort of big epic. I now me, I did not expect historical accuracy, it, mainly because you know he does stuff Going like Gladiator, these, no, and he's no. he, he's not really known for his historical accuracy. Uh, so there are definitely some inaccuracies in this film, which we'll talk about. What? Uh, as I uh, noticed, uh, Napoleon was never fired at the pyramids. In fact, that battle was probably nine miles, maybe more than nine miles away from the pyramids. He didn't do that. But he, had a cool uh, he wasn't a 50-year-old man. And that's, uh, he wasn't Joaquin Phoenix, uh, and he also had a French accent. <laughs> he was speaking French the whole time, uh, which I guess is a, is a creative choice. Everybody gave Ridley Scott shit for forcing all of his actors in House of Gucci to put on really bad... Italian accents, so maybe it's best that not everybody was trying to put on really bad French accents for this film. So they left it alone and let everybody speak, you know, with whatever accent they had, which is kind of weird for Joaquin Phoenix, who puts in an all right performance. I wish I got a little more Napoleon flavor out yeah, of it. It's just um, he kind of does his little quiet, uh, you know, Joaquin Phoenix thing. Yeah, he, he almost feels more Joaquin Phoenix than Napoleon. And I got to say, um, I liked the film. I think this is one instance I looked up on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, you know, critics, 60. Audiences, 60. I think this is one that they nail it right on the head. It was all right, you know. It's a two-and-a-half-hour uh, film. And even with two and a half hours, it feels like there's not enough time to cram in this man's no. life because it was monumentous storied life. And I feel that maybe he does a little bit of a disservice trying to cr cr cram it all in there uh, because it, the, the pacing is, is breakneck in some instances. And yet it slows to a crawl when we get to essentially... My least favorite part, uh, the love story uh, between Napoleon and uh, Josephine. Now, I understand Josephine, huge part of Napoleon's life, has an obsession with it. I, in fact, I first learned about Napoleon's uh, dirtiness through Alex, because, of course, his love any, letters, any, right? his love letter. Alex the love letters told me great. about his love letters. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, I never knew this. Fifty Shades of Grey. All I know about is, uh, you know. <laughs> Better. <laughs> The piggy. Uh, anyways, um, and uh, but that I feel um, really Scott really wanted to focus on. And I guess, you know, it's a, a less explored, uh, at least to this extent, on the cinema, uh, you know, screen. But I was really more engaged <clears throat> during the battles. Uh, and I really enjoyed the battles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... While I enjoyed it, I don't think it's one of uh, Ridley Scott's uh, best films that you need to run out and see. I think that this is... Uh, it should be coming out soon, right? In Apple? Or uh, something like that? Apple yeah. in partnership. 
I don't know exactly it said when only it comes in out. Theaters, so maybe uh, it oh. may not even come out. Oh, oh okay. I thought maybe it eventually. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it to me, it felt a little unfocused. More of a love story. Do not go in this expecting epic battles. This is not Waterloo, uh, 1970. What was 1970s Waterloo made in Russia? Um, it's not War and Peace. Where they're, you know, a six hour movie, one of the longest movies of all time, six hour movies where they're focusing on the battles. And unfortunately, unless you are really into sort of the paparazzi side uh, in this uh, infatuation love story between Napoleon and uh, Josephine, you might be bored in, in some parts. Uh, but overall, I did enjoy it because if you know nothing about Napoleon, it gives you. Eh, you know, an overall general um, you have to fact check yeah. something. There, <laughs> there <laughs> are there are some factual. Like I said, I did not go into this expecting mm. um, it to be historically accurate. But that's my opinion. Uh, what did you guys think? Uh, I liked it, but I thought it would have been better if I just uh, <laughs> streamed it at home or something like that. For me, um, <clears throat> the pro the production was great. I loved it. Uh, the actors did a great job. Although uh, they didn't do their accents or anything like that, but I thought they were great. Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Vanessa Kirby were amazing. Uh, other than that, though, like like you said, the pacing was kind of very slow. Like for me, I wanted to see more of like the epic battles, more of the strategy, uh, strategies and stuff like that. Yeah, what well, makes them such more... a great general? Yeah, like uh, again, the best parts were the battles, and then. All of a sudden, we <laughs> go back to Josephine, and it's like crawling. I was getting kind of bored. I like, kind of wanted to fast forward or go downstairs and get some more food or something. And I was like, meh. We were at the movie theater, Joe. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, oh, that's so when you were That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's, this is better if like you just stream it. You can just kind of walk away. You don't even have the pause. You just kind of walk yeah, away. Yeah, you walk away, right come back, and you ca kind of catch up. You're not missing much. Yeah. Yeah. But still enjoyable. I liked it a little less than you guys. Um, I, I want to preface this. I wasn't expecting historical accuracy. One of my favorite movies um, that we, I don't do favorite movie of all time, but one I always constantly mention is Amadeus. I fucking love that movie. Mm, um, awesome. And it has, mention it, a lot. I, it has nothing to do with history. It is a, almost a complete fabrication, right? But the, you take away the historical inac inaccuracies and it is a beautiful movie with an amazing story and they killed Every aspect of that movie. And this is a hundred times less historical. So would that film be a 10 out of 10 for you? I'm just curious. Oh, like 14 out of 10. I've been, I took there me two go. years to convince him to watch it. And I don't even think. I, did. He probably I watched, watched it right away. I did watch when, it. When I Alex makes a recommendation, movie. I watched it. Like, I love it that movie. Like, this this movie is, is infinitely worse than that. Like, it is, it, I was expecting a little bit. I mean, we saw the pyramids. We see that they cast like a young woman to play Josephine. She's supposed to be much older than him, which is why she can't have kids because she's in her forties and he's, you know, not a fifty-year-old man, and that's not how it works. Uh, they just it, it, almost every single scene. There's something that's like offensive, and it's like they made, they fabricated this whole thing with his mother and like a girl in a room. He had bastards. Well, that that. It's it not fabrication. A, it was a test. He does have uh, bastard children, and I'm sure it was a way to test whether he was fertile or not. Yeah, but he had already had bastards. <clears throat> yeah. So we knew that she knew it, there, that that wasn't that never happened. Oh yeah, in that particular order for drama sake. Yeah. Well, it's just, Scott, I, yeah. But yeah, it's like totally scene right. after scene is just like they're ramping stuff up, and it's like motherfucker, you're skipping some of the most important cool battle shit that I wanted to see. Yeah. And so you're focusing on made up garbage with the Josephine stuff, and I don't even think they did that well because she was a she was super manipulative. Like she was older than him. She knew she it was in fact. Yeah. There was none of the cool Vanessa stuff. Vanessa Kirby might have been all right in the role i've heard a lot of people say oh she's really good i was like eh. i mean it, and it's not so i don't think they they did the if we're focusing on the love story let's go focus on the stuff where there's a socialite who's bouncing from mm, like no yes. suitor to suitor mm -hmm. taking advantage of the situation yep. she knows everything she's doing. they covered none of that stuff nope. all of the charismatic stuff with napoleon we know he's charismatic he got off a fucking boat ripped open his shirt and said hey I'm your emperor. You want to shoot your emperor? Shoot me right now. Yeah, and they run up to one. him and cheer, and they give him big hugs because he was a charismatic. They, the Arc de Triomphe yeah. is still standing. All of these things yeah. because everyone fucking, the one thing that he did was he was charismatic. Mm -hmm. And they made him a bumbling, soft, incel. Quiet, he played Arthur in this uh, movie. 
the guy yeah. from the Joker. He yeah, yeah, like not yeah, almost yeah, not quite one. as bad, but he's he no, bumbles no. over everything. Like mm-hmm. he's not. I don't know. I think that they failed on the fabricated Napoleon. stuff. I think they failed on Napoleon's character. I don't think they did justice to Josephine. I think some of the battles were cool. He has no charisma. None. And no I, it, charisma. That's why, like, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't read too much into it. But you know, they're like, hey, this feels almost like a British character assassination of Napoleon, and everyone in France hated. I read the headline. That was cool. I get it now. <laughs> now, 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 you understand. Yeah, so why now the I get French it. were upset. They're and like, you're like, oh, fuck off, Ridley. When he's like, the French even hate themselves. They don't. They won't like anything. Yeah. Well, so, it's because you, you're missing. A lot of the good aspects. The, the point. And honestly, this was too big of a project to solve in one, even two and a half hour long movie. Yeah. I, like, we skipped over so much important stuff that he did, so much context that would explain some of those things. So it's like, I don't think they did well in the history. I think they did very poorly in the history. I don't think that they did well in the fabricated characterization of his, his romantic entanglement with Josephine. So it's like, what is left? And then the battles, the battles? are too brevity. The, the, the brevity sh- of the short. battles. And so short. it's like, what Except I'm, from Waterloo. Yeah. Yeah, there, that, that one was very cool. So it's like I give you a couple points for that, but I ultimately is like, man, I would have done anything else with this two and a half hours. Yeah, uh, I think I, you're absolutely right in all of these criticisms. I am just happy to see a film on Napoleon reach the mainstream. I have no idea how they keep giving Ridley Scott the keys <laughs> to these things because the duel, the duel made no money. And yet they give them another two hundred million dollars to make it's an Apple money. film. So yeah. all those charges and, that went dead. And they so maybe stop giving the eighty-six year old all the money in the world. He's guess his next film. Gladiator, Gladiator two. Oh, it's the one who goes to space. Gladiator two, Joe. It's I say be. leave it alone. It's like but okay, so Gladiator cool, two. It's now, but cool. I but I am happy to see, you know, maybe some mainstream interest in Napoleon rub off. People go watch Waterloo. People go watch some of the television series. Better yet, go watch a documentary on it. And and in through that, you know, I like, you know, you could get back into Mo- Napoleon. Yeah. But this, you know, I wanted to. I wanted to, you know, play Empire Total War. I have several videos on Empire Total War, early Angry Joe show stuff. Unfortunately, upon exiting this film, I didn't. I was, I, I, you know, I'm usually in the mood to go and play, and and I'm more like, oh, okay, well, it's all right, you know. And I think that uh, critics and and uh, audiences agree, it's all right. And yeah. the French and Alex agree, nah. No, no. It, it didn't even it didn't even reach this ain't it, this ain't it chief um yeah so um and as far as you know uh there's just even great moments of tension are wasted uh the duke of wellington everyone knows well, i don't know if everybody knows but he's uh, he's the man who put a stop to napoleon in in, in uh single combat essentially or in direct combat and there's just no time, no time for personality for the man. Uh, in fact, they, they even, I think they, they ripped off a moment, if, I, if my memory serves correct, they ripped off a moment of the film Waterloo, uh, which obviously this was taken from history if it did in fact happen, uh, where, you know, there's a sniper who has Napoleon in his sight. And, you know, and, this, uh, and, and he says, shall I take the shot? And he says, Certainly not. You know, uh, generals have more important things to do than take shots at each other in the middle of a battle. Um, but he, but that unfortunately, that moment was way better in 1970. <laughs> this one, it was ruined by this thing where I don't know Napoleon is sleeping, standing up or something, and he even makes a comment like, "Is he sleeping?" So he ruins his own line He's where no it's man. like he has more important <laughs> things to do. Generals have more important things to do, like what, sleeping? Like you, like you just said, he was sleeping. So either he's sleeping or he's doing more dignified and important things. You, you undercut and ruin the line. And they clearly just took it from Waterloo, or I guess from history. But um, so that that was there. Oh, and also another historical ag- inaccuracy. Uh, Napoleon never got shot in the head with Swiss cheese. Oh, uh, were you the there? Sides. Yeah. <laughs> he did get stabbed, though. He never, no, Joe, because <laughs> they actually have Napoleon's hat from the Battle of Waterloo. The exact, like, You're saying there's not a hole in it? Hat. There's no hole Maybe in it. they patched it. No, uh, so they, also, Napoleon got stabbed. He got stabbed in the ribs, and that would have been At cool. At some point. Yeah. yeah. Well, the one battle that he went in, because Napoleon never fucking rode into battle. That's not what generals did. And yeah. so, like, he, so the, the movie just... 
No, there's no historical accuracy. Well, he he did at a certain point lead lead his men from the front. I as as far as leading a cavalry charge at, at Waterloo, I'm I don't know. I'd have to re-examine that. I do know that at the end, I asked these boys. I was like, "Is it? Did they say sixty-one battles?" Uh, I don't think that's accurate. It's actually more. It's more than eighty battles. And I didn't know where they were going with it, and they use it as another opportunity to paint him as, uh, like, a monster. Which, I guess, he is responsible for a lot of French deaths, um, mm-hmm. but they're kind of poo-pooing on Napoleon throughout the whole movie. But he participated in 80 battles. He lost 11. Just because, like, that's what I was expecting him to say, like, to show this man, hey, man, if you go 80 and 11, that, that's pretty cool. I like the football stats. He went 80 and 11. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and then they say his last words were France, Army, and Josephine. Josephine. Just to show you how important Josephine was for him. So, great. Yeah, emotional trauma is a hell of a thing. <clears throat> Too bad we didn't get any of that. Yeah. We got some, as far as the great moments of the film, um, some of the battles I wrote, and when he returns to France and appeals to his men. I thought that was an all right scene. I, but so the thing is, like, you, I, I know the scene where he's supposed yeah. to rip open his it's thing. It's more dramatic. And it's like, the if the history is better, and or at least the, the things that have written <clears throat> or down. Or at least the, yeah. what, what, what the, has been written the, about The scribe it. standing next to him. But I think, I, again, it just feels like Ridley Scott's being like, oh, uh, you know, fuck Napoleon. We're going we're gonna to make him uh, an incel. Or not an incel. Well, kind no, of. No, he's not an incel. No, he's not. They're like a bumbling idiot who does. He's not good around women. He just stares at women at a party like a fucking weirdo. And it's like, okay, I guess. I <laughs> yeah, guess that's a word get the girl. Yeah, he, he yeah. Did get the girl. I guess in the end. Um, it's in the script. Yeah. But he pretty much got. Uh, and he was like one of the first targets of tabloid <laughs> because yeah. he's on his way back and like they're depicting other men in his bed with his wife while he's under, under the bed like he's, he's getting cucked and stuff and I expected I don't know some response from Napoleon on that guy but Me he too. never never fucking <laughs> mentioned again never does anything never talks about it now the film I'm sure Napoleon had something to say about that guy or made the rest of his career a living hell but it's nope. not covered here, no. and that interesting bit would have, like, you, for somebody who's so obsessed over Josephine, you would think he would have he some reaction. He was having reaction. kids in Poland. He, like, he had a kid in Poland. He had a kid somewhere else. It was like, just maybe. a little throwaway he, line. He's he, like, you having affairs? Of course. <clears throat> but they were yeah. just for fun. Yeah. It's not for love. Yeah. It's so like, well, you have kids everywhere. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, n- and not one that you'll run out no. and see. A little uh, too unfocused for me. So let's go into final verdicts. Mm, you go first. Um, you uh, like I think it's a little below average. I don't think it's massively below average, but I, I was expecting if we're not going to do the historical accuracy, I wanted a story that was compelling. I wanted it, it felt like a bunch of kind of cool scenes that were like very loosely related. It's like, oh, the pyramid thing. That's a really cool scene. It's like, how is it going to be related to anything else? And <laughs> because we were sprinting through this guy's achievements and all that he did. I felt like we lacked a whole lot of context for his life. We lacked a lot of his motivations. And so we focused on things that I didn't necessarily care about. So I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. I think it's it's below average. And I think you can see other things with, you know, for two and a half hours. Yeah, I'm going to say this is average for me. Uh, I'm going to give this a 5. Would I, would I watch it again? Maybe. But I wouldn't mm-hmm. really go out of my yeah. way and see this again. Um, the cool parts lasted... Not very long. I wanted to see, again, more of the battles. Uh, Napoleon, like you said, he wasn't very charismatic. He just didn't seem like himself or anything. He just being a poor king. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to see more of uh, his portrayal of Napoleon, but it wasn't really there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that and the battles, that's all I wanted to see. But I was yep. disappointed. Yep. Uh I just ran into a bunch. Uh, oh, I, we got to cover some of these. So, so some more historical inaccuracies. Uh, so you gave it a four, four and then you went five, to a five. Average. I thought you were you were around me a six. I I, I think I was slightly uh, above I was, average. I was thinking about I that, but I was like, I don't think audiences I'll watch it. and no. critics. But the more I think about it, and because I was an actual fan, and because I was excited for the film, it just wasn't where i wanted it to be i don't think it's one of ridley's better films i'd say it's probably middle of the pack i would watch a lot of his other films kingdom of heaven the duelist kingdom of heaven that's where we get god wills it if you've seen you know any of our streams it has the god wills it 
Um, so we are fans of some of Ridley's work, and I just don't think it's his best work. Um, it just it's just an odd, unfocused film with weird pacing and the brevity of the battles. It, it, it's like, God damn, pick something. Pick something to like really get some juice out of. And he just combs it o- over a lot of it. And then including some historical inaccuracy. So I'm actually uh, hearing Alex and both Joe, I'm going from a six to a five. Yeah. Five out of ten, I think it's an average film. Let's do what we you know, are supposed to do here at the Angry Joe Show. When I say something's average, it's average. It's five out of ten. It's an average film. I know most r- review scores count that as a seven, but I think it's a five out of ten. So, uh, I have some uh, more historical inaccuracies here. Napoleon did not charge into any battle with his cavalry. That's what Alex mentioned and said. Uh, obviously, historians will argue with each other on some of these points in one of the next ones I'll, I'll mention. Napoleon was wounded by a British bayonet during the Siege of Toulon. Ah, he also never was at Marie Which, Antoinette's uh, execution. Right. They show that he was just watching it. No, he was mile away. He was far away. Uh, you know, he didn't win <laughs> there for that. And that that's when I knew, because I knew that part, that's when I knew that this is not going to be historically interaccurate. That <laughs> wait, happened wait before Napoleon. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, before the title screen. So I'm like, he's just going to kind of do whatever he wants. Now, uh, there was no giant frozen lake at the Battle of uh, Austerlitz. Now, this I disagree with because some historians say it was there, and he did do that for some retreating, but it wasn't as it was depicted in the film where it was a main element in the battle. It was more like he had already won, and then as they're retreating, you know, historic uh, historians argue, you know, Napoleon writes his own thing. So he said there was like 2,000 casualties. Then a from fucking that. dragon right. showed up and I was writing it. Like that. But historians say it's probably anywhere from 11 people drowned to 200 people. Well, so drowned. this is the kind of thing that I'm totally fine with them changing yeah. because it's taking something like that. cool that exists and then amping it up and like yes. bringing it to 11 yeah. and it's a cool scene it and it fits. Yeah. It is not something as wild as changing how old. They changed Josephine's birthday in this. Mm hmm. Because they wanted uh, to cast a young actress. Yeah, that, 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 that's pissing me off now. That's annoying. Because that is a major element to who Josephine She was, was. an older woman yeah. taking advantage of a younger, inexperienced man. and we Taking got none advantage. Of that. He wanted her. He wanted to be Yeah, but she's emotionally of. manipulating him into getting what Correct. she wants. And yes. you could give um, that character. That, that, to me, is immediately more interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so Napoleon, an uh, author... Arthur, the Duke of Wellington, never actually met in real life. And they did that. And I knew when I was seeing the scene, I was like, I don't actually remember them ever meeting. And they they never met. In fact, Napoleon never set foot uh, on British soil. But he didn't do it in the film either. So Uh, his army never attacked the Egyptian uh, uh, pyramids. Mm -hmm. Uh, And one thing I was like, I am immediately going to look this up. I was like, did Napoleon slap Josephine in the middle of that divorce scene thing? No, he didn't do that. (laughs) So I was like, okay, well, that was, uh, I don't know why you did that. Napoleon was not at Marion Antoinette's uh, public execution. Um, this one, Napoleon was notoriously bad at riding horses. He never completed his military r- training riding. Mm, he probably got better at it over yeah. time. Napoleon was six years younger than Josephine. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is 14 years older than Vanessa Kirby. But you, qu- you can't have old actresses in Hollywood because uh, they don't sell tickets. They don't. I guess they don't sell. That's, that's a sad thing. Um, and then Napoleon's mother likely didn't stage a betting instant uh, incident. Napoleon yeah. already had several little legitimate children. He actually legitimized mm-hmm. one of them, too. Yeah. But he also had a legitimate son, Napoleon II, which he had through the, um, the, the younger girl that yeah, you see Marie in the film. I think he, you know, he attempted to do the Russian Tsar thing when she was 15. That didn't work out, obviously, leading to you know, him He died to, super young. Yeah. You know, and then uh, I think tuberculosis. Let's see. Uh, Josephine was terrified of being divorced from Napoleon. She would have never suggested it as she did in the film, though she did seem like she didn't want it. But she, you know, knew how and had to yeah. do that. So, uh, yeah. And then the the whole uh, tagline of the film, you know, come from nothing, conquered every came from nothing, conquered everything. Napoleon didn't come from he nothing. Was nor ability, did he right? 
Anyway, <laughs> so a lot of historicals, inaccuracies, and uh, a little bit of a disappointment. So, you know, you don't have to run out and see this one. However, I do think it's good enough to watch. If you want something that's not six hours long or, you know, three and a half hours long and made in the 70s where it's focusing on one battle, though I do recommend Waterloo. It's still a good film. Uh, and, and then I guess... You could watch Ridley Scott's Napoleon, but you'd probably be better served with a documentary. Or right now they added They Shall Not Grow Old to Netflix. You should definitely watch that's that good. and then watch a review of that because that's fucking great. And I think you yes. should, I think everyone should watch that. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, I guess, See, it was between this and Wish. And I was like, which one am I going to make the boys see? I guess maybe I should have uh, tortured you all with Wish. I hear bad things. For that, but we chose a Napoleon. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. We appreciate you. And uh, thank you to our sponsors, uh, uh, Surfshark. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.